Thank you. Let's bring in two Republican lawmakers on different sides of this issue. South Carolina Congresswoman Nancy Mace voted to remove the speaker today, and Kentucky Congressman Andy Barr voted to keep him. Thank you for hustling over, both of you. First, Congresswoman Mace, uh, you're one of the eight votes. Uh, Andy Biggs, Ken Buck, Tim Burchett, Eli Crane, Matt Gates, Bob Good, Nancy Mace, Matt Rosendale. Why'd you do it? Well, for me, this is not left versus right. This is not ideological. This is about someone that we can trust, someone who will keep their word, someone that the American people can really trust in this leadership position, because we need leadership in this country more than ever today. What message, and I want to hear, Congressman Barr, what, what you think about this, but what message do you think it sends politically that Republicans are kind of in this chaos moment and now searching for the next speaker? Um, you know, you are opposing McCarthy or did based on different issues than Matt Gates and the others. Mm -hmm. But explain that to well, viewers. I, well, I'm very much an independent voice. And if you make promises to someone, then we ought to keep them. If you make a promise to the conference, you ought to keep it. And telling con conservatives one thing, telling moderates another, telling Democrats a third thing, that doesn't work. We're all adults here. We're all ma about making deals and negotiating. And that's the way this place works. But if your word can't be trusted, then how can we move forward? And I do see this as an opportunity to unite the party around someone who will keep their word, around someone who we can trust. I see it as an opportunity, and I hope that it goes very quickly to bring everybody together and move forward. Congressman Brown. Well, Brett, Nancy's a friend, and I agree with her that trust is important. But today was a sad day for the conservative movement. Today was a sad day for the Republican Party. Uh, because every day that goes on when we don't have a speaker is a day we don't have an impeachment inquiry. It's a day that goes by where we can't pass conservative appropriations bills. It's a day that passes that we aren't advocating for border security. And in a narrow majority, Brett, tactics matter. And joining with Democrats to defeat conservative bills is not advancing the conservative cause. Um, look, this has been a very successful year for Republicans until today. In the nine months that Speaker McCarthy has been the Speaker of the House, we've passed uh, an, an Energy Cost Reduction Act. We've passed a bill to increase production of energy. We've, we've uh, passed the toughest border security bill in history. We've passed a Fiscal Responsibility Act that cuts spending by $2 trillion, permitting reform, welfare reform, on and on and on. And today, a small handful, a minority of our uh, our fellow colleagues gave control to Hakeem Jeffries and the most liberal members of the House. Let me play. I, I'm going to have you answer. Yeah. Let me play uh, Speaker McCarthy from January 7th when he talked about the promises ahead. There is nothing more important than making it possible for American families to live and enjoy the lives they deserve. That is why we commit to stop wasteful Washington spending, to lower the price of groceries, gas, cars, housing, and stop the rising national debt. From now on, if a federal bureaucrat wants to spend it, they will come before us to defend it. So a lot of people had different issues with Speaker McCarthy. Uh, most of your caucus said he was a really good fundraiser, really good campaigner. He fundraised for you in your last race, uh, $100,000 in Charleston. It was a tight race. Uh, and he did a good job by all accounts on that front uh, if you talk to Republicans across the board. Uh, what do you say to Congressman Barr, who says you were one of eight who voted with 208 Democrats and they want this to be chaos. Well, chaos is what got us here, first of all. Um, but number one, I don't owe anyone in Washington anything. I owe the people of South Carolina, the people that I represent. Those are the people that I owe in anything, in any fight that we're having right now. And if anyone thinks that they need, there are a lot of Republicans that can fundraise. Not, it's not just uh, the former speaker. But if they think that women can't win without their help, they're wrong. And no, that's yeah. not what I was saying. I was saying that he was praised for that. Who do you think can be a consensus candidate I think now? There are, there are a number of people that could be a consensus candidate. I just want someone who's going to keep their word to us and everyone that they do deals with. This is about negotiating, and I hope it'll be a, an opportunity for us to unite together. And if we say we're going to have a budget, and if we say we're going to have 12 separate spending bills, well, then let's, let's do it, and let's do it along the time frame we promised the American people. All right, so would you be surprised? 
surprised if people are telling us that um, you may be removed from the middle of the road Republican governance group, formerly known as the Tuesday group, for this vote to remove McCarthy as speaker. I don't know anyone in D.C. I owe the people of South Carolina that I represent for everything that I do. Okay. Congressman Barr, your response to... Congressman, well, Congressman this is a day where Republicans snatched victory out of the uh, uh, snatched defeat out of the jaws of victory. We were making progress. What, what is so ironic about this uh, motion to vacate is the very members who were advocating for regular order have today stopped regular order. The very members who, who voted to vacate the speakership are the are the very ones who thwarted regular order, single subject appropriations bills. These are the members who won't even vote for a rule, let alone a conservative appropriations bill. There's a reason why we were forced into a situation where there's a vote on a CR, because these same members won't vote for conservative appropriations bills one at a time. We can't even get them to the floor. But, but what I would say is, why are these individuals voting with Democrats against a conservative bill that cuts spending by 30 percent, non-defense discretionary spending by 30 percent, and the toughest border security bill ever put in front of the House. Why are Republicans voting against that? That is not conservative to me. Well, we voted actually on the, on the single subject bills. We voted four out of the House that sit on Chuck Schumer's desk. So we voted for four already that are over in the Senate now. So I would argue that that's not quite accurate. Uh, there are many of us who have voted to help uh, fund the border, homeland security, foreign and state operations, the VA, military and defense, et cetera. But when you that's hear the criticism that Matt Gates and that effort didn't know what was coming next, in other words, it was the dog that caught the car, and now... There's the crash. So well, this is an opportunity for us to unite together and come together and, and find someone who will lead us out of this, who will unite us and do all the things that we said we were going to do on the timeline we said we were going to do them. There is a law in this country in 1974 that requires Congress to have a budget. We didn't even have a budget resolution this year. It requires us to have 12 separate spending bills. I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat or who's in charge. That is the law. And we haven't done that in years. Would, and it's you, a would, you, have, to would you have advocated for... Uh, shutting down the government. No, I didn't want to shut down the government at all. But also, when you have a continuing resolution, we, we had this manufactured crisis because we didn't do the spending bills. And then we had to have this emergency crisis to do a CR. This is what Congress does every single year to skirt the law. The law says have a budget and have 12 separate spending bills. I, and I totally agree with Nancy. And I agree with Matt Gates. We don't want to have omnibus spending bills. We don't want to have continuing resolutions. But neither the, Speaker McCarthy doesn't want that either. We have to stay unified to pass these individual appropriations bills. When you have a narrow majority, unity is our ally. Disunity is the enemy of the conservative cause. And today is evidence of the fact that we have now given our majority to Hakeem Jeffries because we have refused to stay unified. The, the way to avoid an omnibus, the way to avoid getting jammed, the way to avoid an open border is unity in the party, not eight rogue members joining with Democrats. Okay, last word, because that is how Democrats are going to pitch it, that this essentially was a political dumpster fire, and they're going to use that in the next election. How will you fight back against that characterization? Well, again, if we had leadership, this would be a unifying moment. But you're going to run your party. own race. Each I, person's I, going to run my, their own and race. And I'm my own person, but I remember in 2008 when the market was crashing, I was a young mom of two kids, and I couldn't afford health insurance. I could not afford COBRA. And I remember watching all the craziness and all the fights in Washington and saying, they don't, they're not held accountable. They don't have to balance their checkbook like I do. They just have this free faucet of money that keeps coming through year over year. They're never held accountable for it. There's no transparency. And I never thought I would be where I am today. And I'm speaking for all of the voices in South Carolina, all the voices across the country that are equally frustrated with Washington being not accountable for anything or any decision or any spending that they do. Yeah. They may have lost some money today because the markets didn't like the volatility up on Capitol Hill either. Um, but it is amazing that you all hustled over here to talk about it from both sides of this vote, and we really appreciate the time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Let's go to the White House.